Welcome to Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, well, it arrived sooner than I expected, and that's not a bad thing. So this will be really fun. Today we're going to take an in-depth but speedy look at the Crosley Eclipse entertainment system. This is going to be an all-in-one unit, but it's going to be designed rather than like an antique sort of Victrola looking thing. It's going to be sort of a modern component designed system. So without further ado, let's go ahead and unbox it here. I'm going to really try. I notice I have a tendency on the product review shows to make these like five hour long shows, which I know nobody has time for. So I'm really making an effort to speed up this show. Hopefully it will actually be shorter. We shall see. So, unboxing it here. It's got a retail box, which basically means that an inner box is designed to be on the store shelves to help sell the product. Because for Crosley, I think a lot of their business relies on that impulse buy. People happen to be shopping, come across this and be like, man, that'd be awesome to get back into records. Yada, yada, yada. Their product packaging, I think, is awesome. I love the artwork, the pictures. Rather than spend too much time on the artwork, though, right now, let's just open the real deal. Take a look. Take you along for a virtual ride. Maybe you're shopping for one of these, and that's why you're checking this out. Or perhaps you have no intention of buying one of these. just want to see what it's like. Either way, welcome, welcome. All right. Put the knife away before I drop it. Styrofoam blocking materials. There's our instruction booklet. Remote control. And let's see. Okay, so here's the actual. <laughs> so bad at this guy. On one hand, you want to just manhandle it out, on the other hand, you don't want to destroy it. Packed in there tight. But I will say this. I feel like it's well packed. I mean, it's obviously designed to be held firm and held away from the wall of the packaging. So in case a forklift stabs a little bit or whatever, nothing too terrible happens. So that was the main unit. These are the speakers. It does have external speakers. Cool. All right, let me clean this up a bit and we'll take a closer look. Okay, and here it is. It's all unboxed. We need to unwrap it and set it up. But as you can see, you got the main component system. Everything you need is under one roof here. You got the record player. It does have a cassette player, which is awesome. Front loading CD player and some other surprises as well. And separate speakers, which is awesome. So I'm really looking forward to this. I love sort of this brushed aluminum look to it. Sort of a cool 70s vibe. Everything's super compact. It looks like this is gonna be great for like small spaces, apartments. Really anxious to hear what it sounds like. And I will share that with you. So. Now I'm gonna set it up, unpackage it, and let's give it a listen and see how it works. Okay, here it is now. I have it unwrapped, but I haven't connected it because I wanna show you a couple things. First of all, when there is an FCC ID present, which usually happens when there's Bluetooth connectivity as this does have, you are going to have the FCC ID. With that information, you can look up publicly filed FCC documents and oftentimes find out some interesting but public information. Uh, usually the biggest thing I want to find out is who made this thing because Crosley or Modern Marketing Concepts is a marketer and sometimes designer of equipment, but they work with design partners. I'm thinking that in this case they help design this product. It's not just rebranded product. Anyway, um, so doing a little FCC lookup with the FCC ID, I learned that oddly enough, Modern Marketing Concepts, aka Crosley, filed their own FCC paperwork on this. So it's kind of interesting. However, digging through some of the documentation buried, I found that they had indeed worked with a company called Timson Development Limited in China to manufacture this. Now that's not to say this isn't a Crosley design. It is probably a collaboration. Not that it really matters, but I'm just interested. I think it's pretty cool stuff. So anyway, some internal pictures here. 
of what the internal workings are, are like. In order to, to do that filing, they have to show external and internal pictures, and it's a great way to see what's inside a unit without taking apart. Now, before I fully put this together, I wanted to take a look at the back panel here. As you can see, it is not finished all the way on the back, and that's one of the things I always say. I like to see that, uh, that the back panels are completely finished. However, look at the bottom of this thing. Look how many anchor points there are. That's amazing. Seems like a very tightly packed unit. So on the back here, you've got information such as the replacement record needle, which is a Crosley NP6, and other disclosures, yada, 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 serial number, obviously, that all important FCC ID. In terms of connectivity, there is a line output. So if you wanna hook it up to an external sound system or recording device, you can do that. Although, like I said before, it has its own speakers, which will give it a listen. I cannot find anywhere the wattage of those speakers. Based on the looks of them, I'm guessing five to 10 watts per channel, which may make you cringe off the bat. However, depending on how that's managed, may not sound terrible whatsoever. We'll take a look. And then here are the tab speaker connectivity or connections as well, FM antenna. So I'm gonna go ahead and really connect it now and we'll actually take a look at what this thing can do. Let's start by taking a look at the speaker here. Um, you know, it's got decent heft to it. It's sort of this wood grain paneling on the back. You do have a ported hole and then a permanently attached speaker cable. That's really about all there is to it. I would guess that that is probably a two, uh, two and a half inch woofer. I think that's decorative. And then maybe like a half inch tweeter. So yeah, they look adequate. That's interesting, there's like rubber foam pads here. That's probably to cover up screws. And then you've got permanently attached foam pads here. So yeah, that should do the trick. Okay guys, and here it is. This is the front panel. This is literally the state it's in when I plugged it in. I did start to peel this off, however. I always love, some people don't even realize these are there, but you gotta peel these off so that those smooth glass-like surfaces can reach their full potential of awesomeness. So this is super cool, guys, because it's compact. It's not much bigger than an all-in-one record player by itself, and we'll get to that part in a minute. But just kind of taking a cursory tour around the front here, you've got a front-loading cassette mechanism. Looks like the pause button is uh, pushed in there. A good open and close on the cassette tape mechanism. Again, we'll take a closer look. CD drawer, SD card, USB, aux in, headphone out. It's got Bluetooth, it's got a remote. It's obviously got a radio and the record player. What's really cool right off the bat, reading through uh, some of the documentation on this device, is that you can record anything onto cassette and anything onto um, the SD and USB. So you can record even from your Bluetooth onto cassette or you know even Bluetooth or aux in or whatever onto the SD and USB cards. So that gives you a lot of cool options to backing up your own media, stuff like that. I do want to just kind of point out the design aesthetic of the speakers carries over sort of this veneer. It's kind of a wood. It's got a texture to it. It's kind of nice. Obviously, that's going to be an MDF material particle board with a coating on there. Again, I do like this sort of silver front panel look. So let's start off by just listening to the radio. How about that? So I don't have any idea how to use this. I'm just making it up as I go along. I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. FM for tuner. Um, Okay. Let's, okay, so we're at the top end of the spectrum. So let's find a station. Signal isn't great there. I wonder if I can scan. That would be cool. Oh, there it goes, scanning by itself. It does give you a stereo indicator, which is cool. I don't listen to a whole lot of radio. I do have that FM antenna extended though. So if you keep turning it, okay. I was gonna say, if you have that FM antenna, antenna extended, that's about the best you can do. And if you keep turning this, I mean, obviously if you have the antenna vertical, that would be better. It's kind of hanging behind the counter right now. But if you keep turning this, it'll start scanning. So you're hearing it in the room with me. That's an acoustic. I'm not doing a direct line, line input. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds adequate so far. I'm not blown away by the sound. Of course, we're listening to some really rough FM. 
Let's see if I can get another station. <laughs> radio is not coming in good right now. I don't listen to a lot of radio, honestly, so it could just be the way the radio is right now. Okay, so that's that. We got FM, we got an AM, phono, and aux input. So if you switch to the phono input, that'll be either the record player or the aux in, CD input, USB, and tape as well. And then you've got transport controls, programmable, CD player, which is awesome, repeat, and you can delete uh, songs that are on your storage media as well. But let's start off with a cassette tape, why not? So this is kind of interesting. I'm getting a hum when the volume's at zero. And when I turn the volume up, it goes away initially and then it comes back a little bit. Might be some RF interference. Okay, for a cassette, we're gonna listen to Roy Clark. Now don't click away. I know what you're thinking. This isn't bad, this is good stuff. Roy Clark, this is one of his few instrumental albums. And for those of you rock and roll guys, you're probably like, Roy Clark, that's some hillbilly crap. It's actually one of the finest guitar pickers ever. Like Chet, Aquin, Chet Atkins quality. By the way, let's look inside this mechanism here. Okay, see the blue uh, race head down there? See how it's at an angle? Sorry, the lighting isn't great. That identifies this as a very common cassette tape mechanism that's used in almost every modern cassette player. There's no Dolby or anything like that but it's a solid performer and actually it does a good job. I mean, it's basically, if you could look behind this plastic here, you'd see a bunch of stamped metal parts. It's pretty rugged, pretty durable. It's cheap, I mean, obviously. It comes from like one or two factories in China from what I understand, but that blue erase head at an angle is the telltale sign. Now, well, that's interesting. So if you push up on this side, see how it kind of wiggles a little bit? Still feels like a good descend though. It still feels, like it's cushioned, like a crispy sound. I don't know if there's a, there might be just a layer. Oh yeah, there's a layer of protection on there. Uh, what I was gonna say is on these uh, mechanisms, what they will do is they, instead of using an electromagnet for the erase head, which is always in contact with the tape and then activated or deactivated based on the button pushing, this actually has a full on electromagnet that rotates down out of the way so it doesn't erase your tapes unwanted and then when you need it, it rotates up, which works fine. But that's how you can tell that blue erase it. All right, enough of me jibber jabbering. Let's listen. forward a little bit. Sounds like a really fast fast forward, which is good. You know, it's good sound. It's not like, oh my gosh, the sound quality on this is blowing my mind. But it seems like pretty full range sound. Let's listen to another track on the back. And yes, to answer your question, this, there's no auto reverse. There's none of that. It's probably, I don't even know if it has a full auto stop. You guys taught me that a uh, full auto stop is when you can fast forward it or rewind it and it stops, where a semi-auto stop is when you're just playing it, the lower speed, and then it can stop. Different mechanism or different, you know, working, working? No, different process? Just different, okay, here we go, a little more. So it's interesting, with no Dolby, you may be saying, oh, that's terrible, you know, how about the noise reduction? So the cheaper heads that they use in the modern mechanisms don't have the fidelity of the original ones. So what ends up happening is tapes that are recorded in Dolby like this, I'm sure this is a Dolby tape. I'm sure it's a Dolby tape. Maybe not, <laughs> maybe I have one of the few not. By the way, check out this case, isn't this cool? It's very non-typical, I love it. Um, but anyway, what ends up happening is because this is a lower fidelity tape head, it actually dulls down the sound a little bit, which acts as, the, as similar to a Dolby circuit, which basically crushes high ends that are artificially amplified on the tape. And we've talked about that before, so interesting. Okay, now let's listen to CD. If you guys are hearing an off-camera creak, it's my chair, and I apologize. So let's switch to CD. Let's go ahead and pop this out. I can already tell this show is gonna be long, and I intended for it not to be, and I... Here I am doing it again, so my apologies. Good snappy tape mechanism, or a drawer mechanism for that. Let's go ahead and listen to a little Brian Setzer. 
try to mention the names because I get questions on that. So I want to make sure you guys have that information. It's clean, it's full. Trying to keep the copyright pounds off of me. Cool. I mean, it sounds good. It sounds like it's good. I would be curious what the uh, output sound would be hooked up to external speakers. We're not going to test that today, perhaps in the future. So yeah, these speakers, you know, somewhere between adequate and above adequate, I would say. They get the job done. They're not going to blow your mind but they don't sound terrible. They're not gonna be like, oh my gosh, those are terrible speakers. They're, they just get the job done. They allow you to centrally place this unit, you know, on a bookshelf or in, you know, confined spaces, yada, 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 and then extend these speakers out. It looks like they have about a meter of cable on each, which is adequate. <laughs> Keep using that word adequate. I love this. I love this a lot. So anyway, let's continue on. Uh, let's take a look at the record player next. After all, this is recordology, right? Perched right on top, you've got a somewhat familiar looking turntable. This looks a lot like the Vibe turntable system. Although this lid, although similar in shape and the cutouts are in the same place, etc., has is kind of clear. It's frosted except for this clear area where you can see down in to the record label. So that's kind of cool actually. So anyway, under the hood here we have the familiar Skywind type of ceramic cartridge assembly platter it's not it's just like that vibe actually it's not shock mounted really let's take a look oops let's take a look at the needle i want to see if we got a diamond needle and i want to see if the um cantilever is metal or plastic Okay, so we got <laughs> Okay, so we got ourselves a plastic cantilever with a ruby or sapphire tip. That is entry level, guys. Are you going to notice it on this type of a system? Probably not. It's better to upgrade those to diamond with a metal cantilever for reasons we've talked about before. However, let's give it a listen. John Denver on here. I'm trying to spice it up with some different music types. We do have the cueing lever. That's good. It starts automatically when you rotate. Three speeds, so you can do 78s, 45s, 33s. It's not going to damage your 78s, and 78s aren't going to damage this. But ideally, you would want a three mil stylus for playing 78s. I have to say that because even though I have told you guys that, and learned it myself many, many times. Somehow that thing comes up every time. Well, you know, you shouldn't be playing 78s on that. It's not gonna damage anything. It'll sound better with a wide groove stylus. I'll give you that. So the auto on and off, or the auto stop on and off switch, is pretty much all there is to it. So let's listen to a little Aspen Glow here. Beautiful song. Good gradual descend. And here we go. Ooh, those cracks. You know, it's interesting, those cracks being so loud, it makes you wonder if it's like out of phase or something. Sometimes they don't impedance match these type of turntable mechanisms. You know, it sounds a little thin. Let's go ahead and listen a little more. So yeah, I mean, it sounds like pretty similar to an, a suitcase player or an all-in-one. I actually would say like a Victrola all-in-one sounds better than this. I know that sounds like blasphemy perhaps, but it sounds a little bit fuller, a little bit richer. I don't think there's anything wrong with this whatsoever. This type of mechanism is gonna track at about five grams. It's not gonna damage your records. Typical disclosures I have to give because, by the way, yes, it's designed to close the lid with the record on 
and the frosted opening area thing, you can see the label. That's cool. That's good design right there. This is the same off the shelf turntable mechanism that entry level products need to use. Now, what is the cost on this? I get this question a lot too. Usually I don't mention it because the cost can change. But as of the creation of this video, these are about $169. But wait, consider how much you get. Speakers, the record player, it's entry level, but it gets the job done. It's not gonna damage anything. But you've got a CD player, you've got a good tape mechanism in there. You've got the USB, the SD card, aux in, yada, yada, yada. So I think it's cool. Now let's go ahead and listen to some music on USB. So I'm gonna stick in my thumb drive. Wow, I actually plugged in a USB device right side up for a change. So let's go ahead and flip it over to USB SD and turn the volume down. It's gonna read it automatically, I guess. Folder two, and there it goes. It's gonna go ahead and play by itself, I think. Okay, <laughs> so what do I have on here? This isn't the greatest sound test, but what I've got on here, that's, listen to that hum again. Don't like that hum. It only does it on certain inputs. Like, listen, if we were to tape, goes away for a second and then it comes back. Okay, never mind. CD. Part of that is my refrigerator in the background. It doesn't do it on CD. Does do it on tape. Do you hear that change there? CD, silent. Tape, buzz. USB, buzz. Anyway, what do I have on here? I've got some Kmart background music. Why? That's a separate story for a separate show. But there you go, it works. And you can record, like I said, the procedure for doing that is in the manual, but you can record to this, you can record to that, you can record to tape as well. So, I just like listening to background music, guys. I think it's really cool. As you're shopping at Kmart. Some of these are cool. They even have like the in-store announcements. Let's see if this one has it at the beginning. Actually, we already listened to that. So let me flip to another one here. Nah, they're not gonna do it. Okay, anyway, so that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and test out the Bluetooth and then we'll make a judgment call and send you on your way. <laughs> so here's what I have to say about this. I love the design aesthetic of this unit. The speakers don't appeal to me as much as this unit does. I think the turntable is adequate for beginners, but isn't going to give people a representation of what vinyl can do. So the one argument from audiophiles that we get is, <laughs> that is a valid one, is don't let them, don't let a entry level turntable sound quality turn them off to the potential of vinyl. And I do think there is validity there. However, they're not gonna damage anything. There's nothing wrong with it. And I think most people realize this is entry level and we'll move on to something better eventually. That being said, I think the tape player's fine. C player's great. SD card, USB's fine. Aux in, I'm sure, is fine. Bluetooth is fine. We didn't even look at the remote, but it's got your basic controls. Um, interesting, it doesn't have a volume control. I wonder if that means that this is a analog volume control. I'm not sure. Anyway. I think this has a lot of potential in terms of the concept. The execution of this, I think, is really good. The speakers, I think, could use a little bit of love and possibly the power output to those speakers. But I like all this connectivity condensed in this dense space. If you've ever heard the term receiver, which is a cassette receiver, this is kind of like that with a lot of added extras. So it's kind of a cassette receiver, a CD receiver, turntable, everything all in one. But in such a way, it looks like a component stereo system. So it's pretty interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the description down below. I think that this would be a fair starting point. There are caveats we've outlined before. However, I think it's cool. I think it looks great. I think it will serve certain you know, functions well and people that are looking for this design aesthetic would be well served. So that's gonna do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this show. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below. But that's going to do it for now. Happy record hunting. We will see you next time and tomorrow. <laughs>